guests. I am excited, I am enthusiastic to be here. May or may not have an awesome guest coming on, you'll just have to wait and see. So this is like the same same rodeo as always, but we're gonna maybe like spark it up, make it, make it extra fun with a guest today. This guest is pretty awesome. She's a geologist and she's really good at gemstones and minerals. And she likes Wolfenite. So I know that this is Renata. Renata is a Wolfenite expert and she says it's actually one of her favorite minerals, gemstones, minerals. We will jump on into that because I want to hear exactly why she likes Wolfenite so much. To be honest, I don't know that much about it. I didn't really see it until I got to JTV. When I think of Wolfenite, I think of a stone. It starts with the W. It's not super well known. I don't think I've ever seen it in jewelry. I remember that it's orange, kind of like candy but you wouldn't want to eat it. Nope. Because obviously no one wants to eat candy. Yep. I'm just gonna open this up because I'm really excited. Let's do this. Aw, it's so pretty. You know what it kind of looks like? UT orange. I think the way that it grows is really cool. It kind of reminds me of like a kidney stone. Like when I think of a kidney stone, like, you know, the calcium, I <laughs> just don't ask. <laughs> the way that it grows. But this is obviously much prettier. You guys can stop hearing me talk. I'm gonna scoot over and Rihanna's gonna come on in. You're here. Hello. It's been a while since you've been on. It's been a hot minute. It's true. Glad to have you back. Glad to be here, as always. So, Wolfenite. Mm -hmm. It's orange. It is orange. It's that probably, is an outstanding observation, Natalie. I know, I'm so... It's very can orange. Can you tell how, yeah. how much I like gemstones? I'm gonna make you nervous right now. Go for it. That is from my personal collection. <gasps> wow. There you go. I'm not touching that anymore. Hands up. From my personal collection. Love so. fair this episode. <laughs> so, why Wolfenite? Why, okay. not, why not citrine? If you, is it the color orange? Um, all right, so the history behind my love of wolfenite actually comes from volunteer days when I was in graduate school. Oh, cool. Wait, so where'd you go to graduate school? Um, I went to University of Arizona. Studied geology? I studied mineralogy. Mineralogy. In, yep, in Tucson, and I was a volunteer at the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum. How long is that master's? It took me two years. Oh, that's a long time. That's nothing. PhD's way longer. <laughs> When I volunteered at the museum, there was fantastic, fantastic wolfenite because actually one of the localities it comes from is Arizona. Oh, that's cool. And so their vault was full of wolfenite, um, all different kinds. And the thing about wolfenite, not this particular specimen, but most wolfenite is super, super delicate, like paper thin. Little like chiclet sized tablets that are super thin like paper. And so these, if you'll notice, are actually quite like chunky, right? Mm -hmm. Like this one in particular. And look at this, look at that. There's yeah, like an old that. label. Mm -hmm. So on historic samples, sometimes you get a complete intact, or in this case, one that's been damaged, a label from a collector who used to own this oh, a long, cool. long time ago. So I actually bought this during the Arizona uh, Desert Museum's Mineral Madness garage sale. Yeah, hey. so it's an ex-museum piece, which is pretty fun. Wolfenite is actually named after a uh, Austrian mineralogist. His name is Franz Xavier von Wolfen. Okay, that's a great, <laughs> it's very like, just spew that out. <laughs> I'm good. I'll leave it to you, yeah. you said it perfectly. And it was cute because at the beginning of the video, you said you don't want to eat this, even though it looks like candy. And that's a good idea because there's lead in this. Do I have to wash this. my hands now? Well, I would recommend washing your hands after the video. And what's what's really kind of fun about this, back to <laughs> school days, you asked me about like school days, so I have like horrible memories of school. Oh, come on, graduate school, so much Okay, fun. no, well, so back to <laughs> undergraduate, okay. when I was in mineralogy, um, here's what we had to do. We had to get a list of like 100 minerals and we had to memorize their chemical formulas. Oh my gosh. Well, guess what? You know why I remembered this? Why? Because its chemical formula is PBMOO4. PB moo. Peanut butter and moo. Peanut butter and milk. <laughs> like peanut butter and milk. P P PB moo. That's how I remembered it. You know, they say in school the best way to remember stuff is with like mnemonics yeah. and like fun things like that. It worked for me. It works for me. This particular piece actually comes from Mexico, not Arizona. Mm -hmm. Mexico is a really popular place for wolfenite as well. And this is from a mine called Los Lamentos. Great name. What makes like that area known for chunky crystals? Is it like the chemical, is it something in the soil? Something yeah. Something in the water, I mean, what? Okay, so that's a great question. All right, so since wolfenite normally has a thin tabular habit, this very likely had more time to crystallize oh, to cool. make bigger, chunkier crystals because yeah. some of them are so thin that like you can literally see right through them. That's just, they're just that thin. So this is actually in the tetragonal crystal system for what it's worth for all those who need a cocktail party fact. So this is a really nice piece, it's also, featured in the book. Oh, what book are you talking about? 
The book. The book. You've seen the book before. Okay. The SGR. Yeah. Volume two. Because that, that looks like coral. This is I know it's beautiful. It's an azurite fan. Isn't I, that gorgeous? In a like clay coral. matrix. That's really cool. We've had the first edition of the book, guys. Now we have a second edition. But what's even cooler about the first and second edition is the woman who we can thank for the book. You yes. worked. I did work on many, it. I don't, about I mean, two and a half years, probably, actually, from I start to finish. I wouldn't say you just worked on it. You were kind of spearheaded the whole project. Yeah, uh, executive producer. Wolf Knight is in volume two and cool. not in volume one because volume one, as you said earlier in the video, is all about regular, like our normal gemstones, mm -hmm. the ones that are well known. And Wolf Knight is weird. Why would you take a gemstone that has a hardness of two and a half, is super brittle, and cut it into a gemstone. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. The so answer is never, it's very rare. Never in Very jewelry. rare. I've seen um, never in jewelry. You're correct about that. Never in jewelry. It's too soft, too brittle. And also it's heat sensitive, just like sulfur. The heat from cutting would shatter the crystal. So you've only seen this as specimens. Yeah, most, most, mostly. There's a couple loose gemstones that are out there for collectors, but they're just usually stored Those in jars. Those are probably like extra. Like, extra expensive and extra rare. Mm-hmm, definitely. If we go to W, conveniently ordered alphabetically, here it is. Oh, oh it's hey! It's the same piece, guys. It is the same piece. Can I orient it the same? Yeah, mm-hmm. If you want to learn more about Wolfenite, check out the Cis Gemology Reference Volume 2. You'll see here, see, there's a faceted gemstone. It's oh, beautiful. It's just really rare. You barely see that. All right, crew, if you guys want to buy the SGR, you can find it on JTV.com. I probably refer to at least one of the volumes every single day. If you think we're done with Wolfenite, you're we're wrong. We're not, I know. I don't want, because we're not, we're not a no so much. We were never done. We're never done. Okay, so I'm gonna close the book. Don't test me. There's please. another box. No, you, I, I insist. You're the guest. Okay, you ready? Yeah, three, two, one, go. Hey, whoa, what is that? Mm -hmm. What is that indeed? Oh my gosh, it looks like velvet. Okay. Can so, I touch it? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm hmm It doesn't feel like velvet. I know, but it looks like it. It's got that sheen. So pretty. Isn't that okay, amazing? so the orange is wolfenite. Yeah. That it, kind of looks like iron. Yeah, iron oxide. It's like rusty. And what's the green thing? Mimetite. I have never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. So mimetite is a really cool mineral, and it is very rarely ever this green, evergreen color. But what do you notice about the wolfenite? It does not look at all. No, it, like the other one, it looks does it? Like spikes, almost. Yeah. Instead so of we call that habit bipyramidal. Okay, what? Yeah, bipyramidal, pointed, elongated, and pointed. And so when you look, when you just turn them this way and compare, you have a classic tabular habit for wolfenite, and then these sort of weird spiky ones. And there's a couple of things that are unusual about this. Okay. Number one, the mimetite being green is weird. You you never really get that. It's unusual. The velvety texture, yeah, the, what is the that ball from? type shape. It's just a, it's if you look really really closely, you would see it's just a bunch of little crystals lined up all against each other. Would you call that botryoidal? It is definitely botryoidal. Yep. Want to give a quick definition for botryoidal? Yeah, botryoidal is basically a fancy token cocktail word for anything that looks like a grape, a grape shape, or a ball shape in a mineral. The wolfenite is bipyramidal, which is just weird. Oh, I don't think I can look that close. Wow. <laughs> I mean. So yeah, so this, believe it or not, this was actually a wedding gift. You know you're a geologist oh, when people give you this for your wedding. Oh, that's so sweet. Who, who bought you that? <laughs> um, my good friend from grad school. That's such a mm -hmm. great gift. She knew I wanted it. This one is also from Mexico. It's from a place called Ojuela. So it doesn't you know. have a, I've never been. I've been to Mexico, but I've never been to these particular mines. So what we didn't talk about is how they form. Lead minerals form from secondary oxidation of other minerals. Kind of like malachite and copper? Yes, similar. Wolfenite forms via hydrothermal processes. And what that is, is hot water. Water that's heated by something as hot as like magma. This is not like boiling a teapot. This is hot water. Water that's hot enough to dissolve rock. That water goes around other minerals that contain lead, sulfides, silver, all kinds of stuff. And it dissolves those ions and it redeposits them. That's where you get wolfenite. Wolfenite is commonly associated with other lead minerals like galena. Okay, we've talked about that. Which is PBS, right? That's an easy you want to remember, lead sulfide, yeah. silver, native silver deposits, and all those kinds of metals are really common in places like the Southwest. Oh, cool. So Arizona, Mexico, etc. So really, University of Arizona was a perfect place for a geologist. Yes, to and a wolfenite lover. And a wolfenite lover. <laughs> Do you have a bigger wolfenite collection or just these two pieces? No, just these two pieces in my personal collection. There is a mine and it's called the Red Cloud Mine. Where's that? It's in Arizona, in La Paz County. And what's really interesting actually about that wolfenite is the crystals are very red. They're almost like a blood red color. Are they color. usually orange? Or uh, yellow they're typically, orange? yeah, Wolfenite is typically yellow or orange, but would you, I bet you'll never guess, what is actually included in these Wolfenite crystals to make them red? 
Um, it's shocking. I would say iron, but I, it's, it's not. It's not. It's chromium. Well, that chromium and ruby. I know, but chromium makes... and wolfenite is bizarre. So you don't get that. It's a weird object. thing. So the tiny little bits of chromium, the tiny little chromium atoms substitute in um, for the molybdenum, the MO in the mu of the formula. Is that kind of like a solid and solution make them red. Um, No, it's just a substitution. Oh, because we're at, at the parts per million, at the parts per million level, just okay. a very small substitution, just like what you get in ruby and emerald. All right, chromium. Renata. So we haven't had you on the channel in a while. That's true. And I've been doing this thing when I have oh, experts no. on the channel. Okay. What is your advice to those gemologists, geologists, mm -hmm. or mineralogists out there yeah. who want to grow up, have a job like yours? Okay. What is your advice sure. to okay. those to s um Yes. If you love rocks and minerals and you want to be a gemologist like wonderful Natalie or a geologist like, like me. Like wonderful Ramada. <laughs> then my biggest recommendation is get out there, get a bunch of rocks, look at them, see them, appreciate them, ask questions, and just be persistent. I've done it my entire life, ever since second grade. We had fun today. Everyone, tell Renata to come back. Tell Renata to bring more cool specimens. I ask her almost every single day, and I think she's probably sick of me asking, <laughs> so I need your help to get more cool stuff. Next time I'm in Arizona, I will maybe look a little bit closer for Wolf and Night. Yep. Because I like UT. UT. All right, Renata, you know the okay. drill. Yep. Pick up your favorite piece, okay. hold it to the camera, okay. and tell our lovely viewers okay. to take a closer look at. This is an unusual wolfenite. If you Google wolfenite, you're not gonna see something like this come up because of its bipyramidal shape. And also notice the matrix of velvety botryoidal mimetite, which is really cool. That's a mouthful too, isn't it? Yeah. the fun is done here today on YouTube. Like and subscribe. We really want to have you back in the future. You don't want to miss out. We've got gemologists, geologists, mineralogists. We've got the whole host of cool things coming up. Don't miss out.